Hello, my name is Carl Holmgren, and in this video I'm going to tell you a little bit about my Dodge Travco motorhome. Uh, I haven't done much to the exterior of the motorhome over the years, but I've done quite a bit of renovation on the inside that I think you'll find interesting. But first, let me show you a little bit about the outside of the motorhome. We bought this motorhome about 20 years ago from McLean's RV in Denton, Texas. We sometimes say they paid us a ticket. It's a 27-foot Dodge Travco. It was made in Detroit in 1974. It's got a fiberglass body uh, made in two molded halves that are joined by a dorsal seam. It's a steel frame inside the fiberglass shell that's bonded and provides a, a, fra a frame to which the cabinetry and the sheeting are attached. A major improvement came early on when I found a new 600 series Dodge Motorhome chassis with a 440 V8 engine, a 727 torque flight transmission, and a Rockwell rear axle. The chassis had been purchased by somebody intending to build a motorhome, but changed his mind about the project. We replaced the complete powertrain, suspension, front axle, and steering with the new components. We've just replaced the four rear tires and we'd replaced the front tires a couple of years ago. The other major renovation is to completely replace the interior cabinetry, floor, walls and ceiling, but I'll tell more about that later. Here's a storage compartment. And in here, keep a small step ladder. Long chairs, and a table. Front wheels are up on blocks to keep the motorhome level, so I'm just using a couple blocks under this table. Also in this compartment is my jack, hydraulic jack, and the chassis battery, the battery for the V8 engine starter and electric system. On the right rear side is the Gen Set. An Onan 6 kilowatt hour 120 240 volt Gen Set, which can be started from the dashboard or it can be started from right here. interesting design, the cooling blower blows air out of the compartment to create negative pressure in this whole area. So the cooling fan draws air in through the grill into the compartment, over the cooling fins on the engine, and out through an exhaust port at the bottom here. This, this compartment is lined with sheet metal. To make it a semi-combustion proof area and then on the outside of the sheet metal is um, fiberglass insulation to provide some sound deadening in the passenger compartment. The Genset battery has an isolation switch to completely disconnect the battery so that it won't accidentally discharge when it's in storage over a long period of time. With the key removed, is dis disconnected. On the left rear is a storage compartment for hoses and cords, 
and a little bit of space for blocking. And in this compartment is an inverter which converts 120 volt line voltage to 12 volt DC for the 12 volt accessories in the uh, motorhome. And there's a little fuse bank on the inverter. Here's a fold down bin. For storing the sewage hose. And its connectors. At the left front is another storage compartment which I use for briquette barbecue and a few blocks for leveling the rig at campgrounds. And there's a neat little canopy over the window that's behind the couch. There's a 1,500 kilogram, uh, 3,500 pound GBW towing hitch with an electrical outlet, outlet here for trail behind vehicle lighting. The ladder at the rear leads to a roof rack on the top of the unit and the, the housings on top are for the vent fan, the fridge vent and the AC at the very front. Just inside the step well is a heavy lid. Which covers up and gives access to the, the coach batteries. A pair of deep discharge batteries for the electrical accessories in the coach, electric lighting and fans. And like the genset battery, I've got a battery disconnect switch to completely isolate the batteries and prevent accidental discharge when it's in storage, just in case something is left on. The coach batteries are also connected to the electrical system through a pair of 50 amp fuses. The lid is designed to keep the batteries from falling out of place in the event of a rollover. Inside the main entry door is a neat screen door. which can be spooned against the entry door um, and latched in place against the entry door. There's a sliding panel on the screen door that gives access to the inside handle of the entry door and, and the lock when the screen door is latched to the entry door. The Travco has a nice seating position well forward in the cabin right up close to the windshield or up around windshields. Um, the steering wheel moves a little bit. All the controls fall nicely to hand. A little smaller than the original steering wheel. Um, good power steering so we don't need a huge steering wheel. Directly in front of the steering wheel is the original dash panel with the speedometer fuel and oil pressure, coolant temperature and, and charge indicator gauges, headlamp switch, wipers and washers. Over to the left is a switch panel 
for connecting the uh, coach batteries to the vehicle electrical system, the chassis electrical system. Um, bright dim switch, fog lamp switch, map lights, fuel pump. A momentary switch to operate electric fuel pump because the fuel tank's 25 feet back of the engine. So if the vehicle's been storage, the fuel's drained back into the tank. I can just pump the fuel up until I show fuel pressure on the fuel pressure gauge. There, fuel pressure gauge begins to move, and then the engine doesn't have to crank to pump fuel up from the tank, the back of the unit. To the right is an extra gauge panel where I monitor fuel pressure, coolant pressure, transmission pressure, and can check the voltage in the coach battery, chassis battery, and gen set. Chassis, I need the key on to check voltage of the chassis battery. Engine oil temperature, engine tachometer, engine vacuum, and an amp ammeter for the coach battery to see whether it's charging or discharging. And then there's a little panel that comes with the vehicle for monitoring uh, engine oil level, coolant level, trans transmission, temperature, and oil level. To the right again is the heating and air conditioning control panel. The little gen set start stop tachometer panel and AM FM radio. At the just below my left hand is the gear shift and the parking brake lever. Mrs. Holmgren found the ride right over the string axle to be a little bit less than comfortable. And so recognizing that truckers swear by their Bostrom seats, I made up a seat suspension system for the passenger seat. Uh, just a parallel linkages with bicycle tube for spring. The uh, rubber spring works very well, uh, doesn't bounce back. So there's no, doesn't seem to be any need for a recoil snubber on the seat. Immediately behind the driving compartment is the couch and a little dinette table. Of course, the couch converts into a bed. And there's a lift off panel to gain access to the underside of the couch for storage. made some pretty nice looking overhead cabinets. In keeping with the curved lines on the outside of the motorhome, I've tried to accomplish the same thing with the overhead cabinets. Nicely, nicely curved doors out of 8 inch birch plywood and spruce framing. The 1 8 inch birch plywood that I used for interior finishing only comes in five foot by five foot sheets. So that's as tall as the, the plywood sheet is. So I simply covered up the splices with a, th a thin strip of purple heart. And then I continued that on the bottom edge of the cabinet, the overhead cabinet doors at, at about the same height to get what I think is kind of a, kind of a pleasing effect. Then all the drawer handles, door handles and so on, lock knobs are also pieces of purple heart. The Dunnet table detaches and unfolds so we can comfortably seat four for dining.
and it attaches firmly to the wall for traveling. There's under cabinet lights operated with 12 volt. 110 volt lighting of this compartment is with overhead indirect lighting coming in from lights over top of the overhead cabinets. Okay, mo moving back, uh, we have the galley, sink, double sink, cabinets, drawers. Under this compartment below the kitchen drawers is the forced air furnace. It takes air in through these holes at the bottom of the door and the heated air comes out of three outlets at the front of the cabinet towards the front of the motorhome, an outlet in the bathroom and one at the rear of the cabinets for the rear of the motorhome. The forced air furnace is controlled by a thermostat on the front of the bathroom wall. And on this side, bathroom. The door is detented at this position and then swings fully open. Bath features a shower, a throne, and a little laboratory and mirror. Under the lab is some more storage. Further back in the galley is a cooktop with a 12 volt exhaust fan above it, LP fired cooktop, and below the cooktop, two large drawers, pots and pans, toaster, toaster oven, and then behind the microwave, 110 volt microwave, and a chest of drawers. bedding and clothing. On this side behind the bath is a three-way fridge, 12 volt LP or 110 volt, works very well. Here is a monitoring system, an RV monitoring system. It displays water level in the freshwater tank, uh, sewage level in the holding tank, um, paddle power, battery condition, time barometer, it's especially useful for the holding tank and water levels. In around behind here is closet space. hanging closet space. On the other side, the microwave is attached to the countertop with a couple of aluminum straps screwed to the underside of the countertop. The mattress is a medium high density foam, high spec, very comfortable. The bed under the mattress covers up four compartments. Of course, over to the um, right rear is the genset. Under the next space here is a large rollout drawer. The 
locks in the in the home position. Then under this area is a water tank, which I made up out of half inch birch plywood and lined with fiberglass, layers of fiberglass cloth. And here's a couple of clean out holes for the for the water tank. The reason I replaced the, or made a new water tank was that I was having the motor home moved and somebody accidentally put gasoline in the water tank filler pipe. It's quite, a, quite an innocent mistake because the water filler pipe looked for all the purposes like a gasoline filler cap and the gasoline filler caps hidden behind the fold down license plate. Anyway, it wasn't, we never were able to satisfactorily clean the, the plastic, original plastic water tank, so I just went ahead and, and made a new one. The water tank fill is now a piece of threaded PVC with a white plastic screw on cap. So, and the gasoline fill down here behind the license tag. But what I really wanted to show was the fourth compartment, which includes the hot water heater. It's a 110 volt hot water heater, but engine coolant circulates in plumbing around the, uh, the water heater to, to preheat coolant. So when you arrive at a campsite, you will have hot water. There's a 12 volt water pump to supply pressure when dry camping. Here's a 110 volt heater to provide heat if you're at a plug at a, a serviced campsite. And just below the 110 volt heater is a 12 volt heater that uses engine coolant for heating the rear area of the motorhome. Let's see if we can make some sense of this rather busy compartment. Water incoming, water coming in from the street connection comes in at that point into a four-way T from which the water can go into the water heater to the water pump. Or if we open this tap into the fr fresh water tank of the motorhome. Here's the 12 volt water pump to supply pressure um, to the for, for the motorhome system if you're not hooked up to a water source at a campsite. Taking water out of the tank and pressurizing it for the sink and the bathroom. Down here this red handled tap shuts off the hot water from the V8 engine cooling system into this rear water heater but does allow water to flow continuously into the copper tubing that surrounds the hot water heater to preheat 6 gallons of water while you're traveling. Then as I mentioned right on top here is a 110 volt heater to keep the place comfortably warm if you're at a campsite where you have service. And down below it is the 12 volt coolant heated compartment heater for heating the rear of the home motor home. That heater, the 12 volt heater is switched on at the dashboard. And the compartment is lighted so you can troubleshoot it if necessary at night. At the front of this compartment is the 110 volt entry box system and on the front of the water tank here is a 12 volt junction box. The turn signals are powered with turn signal brake lights are powered with relays and there's also a relay so the fridge can't be connected to 12 volt unless the V8 engine is running. Well, there's an overview of what's been a 
20-year project, almost a hobby of mine. I don't claim that it's the smartest thing I've ever done. I don't know that I'll, I'll ever recover anywhere near what it what I put into this project. But anyway, I thought it'd be interesting to show you um, some of the innovations that I put into this restoration. Um, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for forwarding information on my channel to other folks that you think might be interested. Thank you very much.